And we're back with another episode of the Pals Podcast. I am your co-host, Danny Galarno. And I'm Ricky Liordi. How'd you like that? It was different. I appreciate that. <laughs> I do appreciate the difference on that. I'm trying. Um, so Danny, Ricky, who, tell us who we had on today. We had Brian John Hardwood on. <laughs> and this is a man of, one, many talents, but two, he is got so many stories that we could have chatted for hours yeah but also like just great fucking dude too it was a i actually really enjoyed the episode and i feel like i said that a lot but like it, it was truly just like as it was going it was like building and building and then yeah. i feel like we finally like it was like cracking him and like becoming pals which is like yeah. what this episode no, no, like these uh, episodes are for and then like we cracked it and it was like it just like flowed endlessly and like i think we could have gone on and even continue to go on but like there's a massive bug on the floor ew okay. anyways um i'm like really let's go to nashville uh, do you know what that's one thing i love about this podcast is that we don't care how many followers you have how many subscribers we don't care about none of that like are you doing something cool hit us up let's get you on the fucking podcast and when we had him like we we listened to his music beforehand and you know you you vet people to make sure that you think you're gonna have a good time but you never know what to expect. We're like, we don't listen to pre episode to other people's podcasts with our guests. We don't, you know, study everything about them. We go by the energy, you know, we creep them on social media a little bit and that's what we do. And his fucking storytelling, his energy, he was just phenomenal. So Brian, man, thank you. Uh, like you've got some cool shows coming up. Hopefully some of the shows actually, we're probably going to miss a lot of the shows when this is released, but like boots and hearts, Sunfest opening up for some major players. So uh, really excited for you, the album that's coming out in the fall, and hopefully we get to do a fucking a Nashville trip together. And this is going to be a released around your birthday, so happy birthday. And yeah, happy enjoy birthday. your show at Sobble Beach. Yeah, and Danny, what do we say? Let's fucking go! Check one, two. All right. So you're going to BC? Yeah, I leave to BC tomorrow. I hit the airport, bringing the whole family, everything. Playing with uh, Keith Urban, Lee Bryce, Cole Swindell. Is it the Sunfest? Sunfest, Sun yeah. Fest. Okay, I've never been to was. the island. I've never been. You know so. what? I've been a couple times for work. Very quiet island, but then apparently they party so hard and like they just have the best time ever. Well, I was actually there over St. Patty's Day and like my hotel was okay. right well, in the yeah, town. St. Patty's Day. <laughs> and like they were like insane, but I've actually heard this. They have really good music festivals out there. I've actually the heard that too. I just got back from, like I've never been to BC my whole life. And then this summer shows are starting to pile in all over. So uh, I was lucky enough to go to Kelowna for my first time. I opened up for Jason Blaine there and yeah, they like to party. And yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, it's West Coast. I spent my days out on the jet ski on the lakes because it's just the mountains all around you and i was just like I'm just tearing it up on the water to stay out of trouble so um but i love it it's so beautiful there yeah. so wait you're going to bc or Vic the island this week and then you're coming back for boots, boots and hearts boots and hearts yeah so yeah. this weekend's keith urban lee bryce uh cole swindell i'll be with my buddies josh ross ali walker out, out there and then fly back and doing boots and hearts uh, i'm playing on day with jason aldean um there's so many people like those festivals are crazy they're like Insane. five days of just non-stop partying and music it's it's great we just had nate holler on like what a week ago yeah and he's also playing too you know like yeah this. i'm good friends with nate he's like so talented so we've had talented. him on twice or twice two, now yeah, yeah twice now just like good fun dude too right like, yeah and so i feel like so many canadian country artists are like i feel like it's on the rise right now especially in canada like lately, like I just feel like you hear so much more country, even on like mainstream, like normal, like top forty radio. Yeah, well, if, if we can bend radio's arm a little bit more, it'd be great. It's like they play like the minimum they have. Like there's, there's I think a, a CanCon law where yeah. they have to pay thirty yeah. percent, but it's like, like we support Canadian music, but at the same time, you're only playing the thirty percent that you you have to play. Well, you know I what also mean? find so a lot like, of the times too, like they'll bend the rules a bit with like the Justin Bieber's, The Weekend. Like I'm like hearing the same Justin Bieber and The Weekend song that came out ten years ago. Yeah, but just because they can use that as their Canadian content, <laughs> yeah, they're technically Canadian artists. Yeah. So it's it's hard for up and comers because like that thirty percent is just your Dallas Smith or your your you know James Barker band or the you know so for the new guys coming in, it's like 
their 30 percent's already filled up so right now especially as a new upcoming artist uh, you got to just focus your time on on spotify on apple which you know thanks thanks to them i'm, I'm getting messages from you know uk you know germany um uh, spain like like the, we have that freedom now of the internet to where it just it's worldwide and it's you can do it independently which is great yeah that's the, and like the power of social media too it helps you reach such a large audience like all over the world whereas before you could reach your hometown and the city that you were in and that was basically it yeah definitely and yeah it's a lot easier now you just got to use the tools right I well think. yeah it's it's always tough though right like there's no there's no clear-cut blueprint to success in this industry right it's not like oh let me just do this this and this and then i'll get there right it's yeah. like fuck you could do everything that everybody says you need to do and still not make it or vice versa you could just fucking get lucky have a song blow up on tiktok and next thing you know you're all over the place right it's 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 i think it's the same with everything you do not just entertainment world it's just right place right time you know just that's why it's important to just be positive shake as many hands as you can um and just be a good person and just go after your dreams right and then if it's supposed to happen it's gonna happen i i agree with that what are some things on your like bucket list dream list that you uh, want to accomplish as a toronto boy like as a you know ontario boy i'm from barry but like budweiser's budweiser stage is definitely on on the list you know cause i grew up i've seen everybody there from you know def leppard aerosmith iron maiden you you name it the list is hundreds of bands right so to um to get up on that stage would be great um red rocks i don't know if you've heard of that that's our favorite venue oh uh, i've never <laughs> been but i'm just like it's i'm so like epic. i'm going when i get to open <laughs> when, yeah. I, when i can play but it's uh, so sick yeah like it's man i that's on the list you know some of your typical ones um grand old opry you know that's more of a look mom look at <laughs> <laughs> i made yeah, it yeah i made it mom i made the grand old opry so um I'm just having fun doing it. I mean, I got two year old twins at home now and like it kind of changed my whole perspective and my life. Cause like all I care about is being a rock star in, in their eyes, you know? So like, um, I noticed myself making decisions now and, and stuff, um, more for them rather than, you know, I want to do this for me, you know? So, um, which is great because now they're they're at the age I can bring them out. Um, they're I'm flying them out to uh, BC, so and we're gonna stay stay about six days out there. Oh, I know I got to rush back for Boots and Hearts, but um, I, I'll get to see the island. You know, we'll take a little sunset cruise and see the whales and just stuff that we've never got to do before. So, um, and I'll bring them on stage. They're at that age that um, they can bring out the beach balls for me to kick into the crowd and, and stuff, you know, and and get to experience that. So that if I'm not here in the future, they can look back at these memories and, and see themselves on stage with I, me. I and feel stuff. like right now this memory is more for you, but when they're older, they're going to look exactly. back. And look. They're going to appreciate like, it. It's like my music videos. I, uh, I try to, if you look at all my music videos, I try to um, incorporate family. They, it's, for me, it's a new age home video. So if you look at them, my, my dad's in them, my brothers are in them, the, you know, the girls are in them, my wife's in them. One of my music videos, I, um, I totally like pranked my wife. She had no idea I was going to propose to her, but the actual real ugly cry is in the video. <laughs> so it's like for the, for my girls to grow up and be able to witness that, like, yeah. um, and in the, the song first, if you watch the video for that, I, um, it's the actual hospital footage of me in the in the emergency room with my wife of the girls coming. So it's like documenting my life in these little, each song is like a piece. So, you know, it's funny too. Cause like when you said the home videos, like I have so many home videos from when I was younger that my dad took of us at the cottage. Whereas nowadays everything's on our iPhones. Oh, definitely. But you could lose that iPhone and lose everything in five seconds. It doesn't mean everything as much as you try to back it up on the cloud or a computer here and there, your computer dies. Like, it isn't permanent. Who prints pictures anymore? No one does. Whereas, I, like now, I look back albums. You have these. They're probably like on YouTube or somewhere where like you can always access yeah. them. They're gonna be on some external drive. That like you'll always have those memories. I I was uh, talking about the exact same thing with my wife um, not too long ago because I was like, I think I forget what I have on Instagram. I think I have like six thousand photos because I, I like I joined it like the day it came out like fifteen years <laughs> ago, whatever. But. Um, 
I'm like, all these memories, if all of a sudden it goes crashes like that and it's you gone. lose everything, I'm just like, so I went out and I bought like six photo albums and this was like eight months ago. I haven't put one photo in yet, but I, like the thought was there anyway. And it's, <laughs> I'm like, I got to start printing these out and saving memories. You know? Yeah, Art. I think about that so often. It's so tough to get photos developed now. Yeah. Like before I was go to Walmart, right? Walmart. No, not every Walmart does it. Yeah. I had a disposable camera that I bought and I went to like six different places to try and get these photos developed. <laughs> but like, no, disposable cameras are different than, because if you go to like certain Walmarts, you can't do disposable, but you can go and do uh, like the email printing where you send it to the yeah. system and then they print it. See, blah, for blah, me, blah, I'm like, but... if I lose my phone and like all my photos on my phone, I'm fine because everything's on social. I mean, like all like all my good trips are on social, like moments with my family are on social. And I have everything backed up, but if like if Instagram goes down, oh yeah, I lose a fuck ton of good moments. <laughs> right? And I'm like, yeah. That I swear so that cool. happened. I swear, like I did this cool road trip. Like, <laughs> well, our biggest thing is I have a younger sister. She's like 11 years younger than me. All her pictures are on our phones. Yeah. We had to like when we were younger do like some like pictures of her that we got printed. But she looks back at our photo albums and she's like, "What the fuck? Why don't I have any of these?" Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't do that sense. anymore. Anyways. Yeah. It's it's so. Uh... <laughs> It's I'm the, just picturing like one of us losing our phones like fuck I just lost everything yeah so that's why like for me that's why my in Instagram I'm um, I, I treat it as a new age photo album only because I figure as my girls grow up like I put myself in their position if my father or if my grandfather had an Instagram with thousands of photos and videos like I would be like reminiscing going back you know we don't have that we don't have that like um, so I'm just no, but I love that though. You're you're doing it for them. I post, you know, people. Some a lot of people are down down about like you know social media or stuff. But it depends on how you look at it and how you use it. To me, it's a positive thing. I just it's like a photo album. You don't post depressing things in a photo album. Oh, remember when I remember you when know. you cried? Remember when you yeah. did this? You're always <laughs> yeah. gonna post something positive. It, it's it's highlights. It's yeah. it's a highlight reel. But it, like you just gotta know that. You know, you'd be like. You know, it's it's things to look back on and smile. So that's that's what my my Instagram is. It's like remembering um, just highlights and, and certain times, family vacations or, you know, when I, you know, did this or did that. So like social media is a great thing if you use it properly, I, th I feel. Yeah. How has your music changed now that you have the girls? Um, You know, I've always been always been like a workaholic. Um but it's just like, I, f I feel like I include them a lot more. Like my last release, no, my last, last release, so before that it was called, um, what was it called? Um, Dreaming was your last. Dreaming was my last. <laughs> yeah. um, made Good. So Made Good I had recorded and on my phone. And I wasn't going to release it, but it was one of their favorites. They were walking around the house and they're only two years old, just turned two. And me, good God in your mouth. They're singing it. And I'm like, I got to release that, you know, like, because instead of they ha it's only on my phone, but now if I release it, then they can say, Alexa, play me. Good. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, yeah. so it changed in that way where I, I, I love to include them. I love to get them in the music videos. I like, like I said, boots and hearts. If you guys are there, you'll see them on stage with, uh, I'm going to bring them up, put them on my shoulders and throw out some beach balls and stuff. I just, like having fun, you know? Man, I love that though. So. Like we've had so many musicians on the pot and I don't think anyone's ever even like mentioned that. Well, no, like, like most of the, the times like they're talking about too just like how much like usually some of them like on tour just like how much they miss their kids and they don't bring their kids into See, like, I try to bring life. mine as much as possible. But it's possible. nice. It's like refreshing that that happens. As much as possible or if I'm in Nashville because I go to Nashville quite a bit. Um, thank you gosh for technology i mean FaceTime. like facetime i'm a, i'm at least a three four time guy like a day guy i'm just like all right what are you guys doing okay i'm gonna facetime and i'm just like you know if i just finished a write or you know i'm in studio taking a break or something it's uh it just feels good it doesn't feel like you left because then if you just don't talk to them for a bit for me the guilt sinks in i'm like i should be at home with them and I, you know but that's why i try to include them as much as i can no, but it's it's also nice that you get you get that opportunity to do it. Oh, right? definitely. Like sometimes it's not. It might not be as easy. Or maybe earlier on in your career, if you would have had them, it wouldn't have been as accessible to bring them. Right. True. Whereas now, 
you're fortunate enough that you can bring them, you can bring them on stage and have these moments. Cause like you said, in 10 years, they're going to look back and be like, that was fucking sick. Exactly. Or in That's, 15 years, they might not even want to be on stage and be like, Oh my God, my dad's embarrassing me. Yeah. Get me off. You know what? I said that to Jason Blaine. Jason Blaine's one of my good friends. And, um, I, uh, I was at playing one of his charity golf tournaments, I think last year. And his daughter was there and she was just turning 16 or 17. Um, she was front row singing along to every word. And I said, dude, that's my goal right there. That my girls don't grow up and I like daddy's music sucks <laughs> you know, or, or embarrassed. Like I just like, dude, I'm so yeah, like, girls. No, when you were two, you, you liked the yeah, song. Yeah. Don't look I got the lots of video, <laughs> <laughs> got lots of video proving it. Yeah. So when did you, uh, when did you get into music? I was just going to ask. I was like, let's like rewind a bit and yeah. kind of go from the beginning. Like, I, right now we, we usually start near the beginning. I yeah. feel like we started at, current we're moving backwards yeah. but when did you start i always been i've always been into the arts and stuff so like as a kid i mean my brother i have an older brother joe he plays with me now actually uh he's in my band now but um he is two years older than me and he was always a sports guy hockey i'd go to his games and he was like you know the rough one that would start all the fights and so it was it was it was great to watch but i'd always have like i'd chug my hot chocolate quick so I could draw on the side of the styrofoam. Like it was very artsy. And then growing up in the backseat of my parents' car, I mean, my mom was a big country fan. So Alan Jackson, Alabama, Randy Travis, Garth Brooks, you know, that's what kind of raised me until um, my cousins got involved. And, you know, that's when the Corey Hearts and the Bon Jovis and the Def Leppards and then progress i just started picking up guitar by myself because i was so shy around 11 i think i picked up my guitar just started playing heavier stuff metallica pantera guns and roses um i just love all music i think my first album i bought was michael jackson but i was so shy growing up i mean i think it was 22 i played guitar from 11 to 22 but never played in front of my parents or anybody i really knew until at the age of 22, I almost got my hand got caught in a steel mill and almost ripped my whole hand off, bones out everywhere. So, um, and it just kind of opened my eye. Like I mean, I was so shy. Never kissed a girl. I was like, I was shy, and that's what my all my tattoos are about is just kind of overcoming my shyness. If I ever, you know, doubt something, I look down and remind myself. But as soon as that happened, it healed up. I asked the girl I was had a crush on out. I started my first band. I um, just you know it takes something like that to really wake you up to be let's show you like if i didn't have a hand i, I would i'd be that's you know. fucking crazy yeah it was pretty intense <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. First off, like the being shy to being on stage performing in front of people that's that's a like a fucking big thing but then like the fact that you had that specific incident like, yeah usually well, last like what's your aha moment when did you know like hey i got some or hey I, this is what i want to do or i also just feel like so many people like we've talked to you were like when did you know you could sing like when was that and you're like oh my parents said this i'm like hey without your parents telling you but it's like you waited till you were 22 Ten until years, like till you yeah. almost lost a hand yeah, yeah t- pretty much and i mean like i had like these these fun little wait what came first kissing the first girl or playing in front of people Oh, kiss the first. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, screw this. All right, it's time. <laughs> it's go time. But um, I was just so shy. I was like, but I, w- I wasn't shy around my close friends. It was just like, you know, it was like you'd have to get to know me. I just, because um, I had a, a little group of buddies that we we'd play music and we tried starting a little band, but um, everybody's like, I'm not singing, not singing, not. And I'm, I was the last one to put up my hand. <laughs> Literally, that's how it happened. Like, I'm not not a word of a lie. And then I was just so fuck shy. Goose. <laughs> I just started saying, yeah, I fuck. Yeah. Got the short stick. Like. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And it was just like um, we had some house parties and to, that we could play, but I just would bail on it because of my shyness, right? Just I was just like, I'd make an excuse or I didn't show up or like, and it was just, um, it took me almost losing my hand um to really open my eyes about you know like you got one kick at the can so it take chances you know it's 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 good to hear no once in a while that's fucking insane though it was i'm glad it happened that's why i got a tattoo it's a it's a whole story on my arm that just some some days I, i just look down and um just remind myself you know uh 
Life just take, take different, yeah, but. take that chance, you know. Okay, so what's your favorite part of like this industry? Like, is it more of like the writing and kind of getting that all done, or is it like actually performing? So performing, like, performing live, like performing live. So even like, like with your shyness, like oh uh, yeah, really, I'm still I'm still kind of quiet off stage, like um, especially that I don't drink anymore. <laughs> um, but I just when I go up on stage, it's like it's like a switch just flips on and um i just love it i love playing live it's just there's something about that interaction with the the crowd and just being able to be somebody different on stage it's like that stallone movie that rest arm wrestling movie where he turns the hat (laughs) i actually think it's the coolest like story that you've had and like one of the coolest we've heard in a while just because like it's just such like a a flip and like to you like saying you love performing on stage too it's like you kind of embody a different persona it's 100% 100% like um are you stunned I, I, to me it's like, like that's a wild story because I was not because we, we ask this question a lot of times and usually you can tell the people that are going to say like yeah I love like making the music like behind the scenes and you can tell the people that are going to say on stage and with you I wasn't at first I would say you were more on stage but then you told me that you were shy I'm like oh, okay maybe he's more of a making the music and like the love of the music itself rather than like the excitement, the yeah. bright lights, the people screaming kind yeah. of thing, right? Honestly, I, I like it all. Like, um, I've always been very hands-on. Like, I mean, I do all my graphic design, all the photography, all, um, like, merch design, web design. I do songwriting, album covers. Um, Everything. You name it. I, I just, I'm very, I just, you know, from, from a young age, like I said, I was drawing on those things, but that evolved where I... I like to paint and draw, and then technology got good, so I got into Photoshop as as a young kid. You know what I mean? So um, I try to help out other artists coming up. I'm just, they asked me to do them an album cover and stuff, and I just I love a lot of there's a lot of aspects I don't like about the industry. I was just gonna ask, what's something that you don't like then? Because you seem like you're a very positive person too. Definitely, you're de- very like I don't want to say happy go lucky, but like. Oh, You're very positive and man. I, I one one thing I'm a big up like there's, especially in my camp and the people around me. I don't have everybody should be like this. It's just like life's too short for drama, stress, and negativity. Like if if preach, it's brother, it, preach. if it's around you, it, life is way too short. I mean, like like it's very important to weed the gardens every once in a while. You know what I mean? Like if so. If something if it's something's causing you stress or it doesn't matter if it's a person, a thing, a job, I mean like it may seem like it's difficult at the time. I've had to cut people out of my life, you know, that were there for fifteen years. But for my sanity and the positivity and my life, it's the best you you know, you weed the garden sometimes, man. I, I cannot agree more with that. Like again, negativity, it fucking weighs on you. Even like I shouldn't tell us, but one of my exes, like I dated this girl for four years. I'd be having the best day ever. And she'd call me that she's stuck in traffic, late for work, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, well, like, this is just really cool. She's like, well, blah, blah. And I'm like, this isn't a contest of like my good for sure or bad. Like, fuck right off. I'm having a great day. I want to, I'm excited to tell you. Yeah. And you're ruining my fucking parade here. Yeah. Like, I don't care that you're stuck in traffic. Like, be happy for <laughs> me. Yeah. I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah, it always used to remind me that I was just like, fuck, you know, I won't tell you next time. I'm going to fucking just celebrate yeah, my little victory yeah. here. Man, and you got to turn around. That's one thing I've learned over the years too. Is like, don't forget to stop, take a deep breath, and pat yourself on the back and celebrate those little things. Because I, I say to myself, you know, five years ago, looking at this where, where I am now, you'd be thrilled. As, like, it's so easy to get caught up in the, especially in this game, like in this industry. It's like it's a numbers industry, right? So you're always like further you get up you compare yourself to somebody just about high, and, and you, instead of being grateful and thankful where you are um you're always striving to hit that next level so that's one thing i've learned to do is you know just be grateful where i am and the opportunities i've had and just, just take a pat myself on the back and be like okay now let's go you know 100 so, percent. so i'm i'm the same way Danny. i don't know if you're like this either but Anytime I, I accomplish a goal, I'll take a second and celebrate like my, my little victory. Whether the goal is big or whether it's small, I'll either plan something for myself or I'll like celebrate with friends or I'll, I'll do something to acknowledge it. Yeah. Maybe I don't celebrate like going and have drinks and party and whatever, but like 
I'll do something for me. Whether it's like, hey, I, I got this little achievement. Okay, fuck, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down, have a nice dinner. I'm going to think about, like, reminisce on the process of getting to that goal. Yeah. Because it is. Sometimes, like, you make goals. When you hit them, you should celebrate that. 100%. And again, I don't mean celebrate, like, going out, partying, drinking, whatever. It's like everybody celebrates their goals in different ways. Yeah. But, you know, like, I hit a milestone on, on TikTok recently. And I was like, instead of having a party, buying balloons that said the number of followers I had, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do a challenge. Like, donate some money to charity. Like, get some other people involved and, like, have a fun time with it. Because yeah. that's how I want to celebrate this yeah. mini milestone, right? The, those little things, um, like, that's the positivity that, yeah. that you, if you give it back, it just surrounds you. Like, um, it's like a smile. How they say a smile is contagious. If you radiate positivity and positive energy that's what gets drawn to you well yeah. like i feed off of people's energies very easily and i used to work with a girl who i didn't even realize at the time just like kept bringing negative energy into work every day and i'd leave work feeling very negative not working with her anymore this is years ago but uh i noticed the difference when she left what's the her co- name no no i noticed it, i noticed <laughs> the difference uh when she left the company on like my day-to-day i'd get home and i wouldn't be so fucking miserable like i was like what the hell and then i started getting more negative because of that or we even talking about this girl we had on the podcast the other day her energy was so positive and like i was like feeding off of that yeah even though how t- like i was so tired that night but it's so important. She's talking about you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did want to ask. So, no, go back. What's the, the one thing that you hate about this industry? Or not hate. If you could change one thing or maybe take one thing off your plate, what would it be? It, it's, it's hard to say. Um, I, we've talked about the radio one a little bit where it's just like, you know, especially in Canada. I'll, I'll touch a little bit on this one. It's like... It's just something that could be corrected a little bit better in the industry. Um, you have all these radio stations and program directors and, and people that, you know, all these festivals are paying these American artists to come because they're huge. And Canadian artists don't have the same draw. And you wonder why. It's because they're fed all this American music, right? But if if these program directors or these radios were playing 50% Canadian, or we're in Canada, play 65% Canadian, you know? Um, all that would do is make, you know, all of a sudden turn these festivals into a little bit more Canadian driven, you know, instead of having Dallas Smith be opening for Florida Georgia Line, maybe Dallas Smith's a headliner, you know what I mean? So um, it's I th- tough because a lot of the American musicians and artists have so much more money backing them too, right? Yeah, and but that all stems if if we put all the money here in Canada with the plays and the listens and and concerts, the Canadian artists would all of a sudden rise and more money behind them. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah, I, I get well, it. I just like also think like if you actually look at like some like the biggest artists in the world right now, they're all Canadian. Yeah, like, well, that's in, what I said, and a lot of them are Toronto, that, and it's all Toronto, and like majority, and it's, like, it's proven that Canadians and like they have talent. Yeah, so it's like if they would put the money kind of where it is, but hey, how have you found the change from let's say maybe like five years ago to now, or has there been one for like the the radio stations and oh they've they've, they've dropped the number of of CanCon, um, they keep dropping. Oh, it's going it's going down. down. Oh <laughs> shit! Okay, so back. now they just made another change where it's like, um, instead of like thirty percent, like it has to be like reoccurring artists. So like, um, they could use up that thirty percent in like, like three different artists. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so like, I'm also like, I just like feel like I'm the type of person to listen to like the same songs over and over. From yeah, and that's them. what and that's what radio but is. Right? Radio drives me insane because it is the same ten songs every thirty minutes. Like I am actually like I try to change a station, go to that station. Oh, prank! Never mind. We're listening to Joe DeCat right now. That same song that I have to hear on the other radio station. Yeah. Like it, it just drives yeah, me nuts. I'm listening to the same songs and I become annoyed at those songs, so I stop listening to the radio. Yeah, yeah. but it's like how easy like. Is it getting in the car, switching it up a bit, putting on the radio? You get in the car and call people instantly anyways. <laughs> How much do you actually listen to the fucking radio? I drive. I'm it's now, like my wife. She has to call somebody. Well, so no, she gets in the car in, every in day, 4, 45, 5 o'clock. Af- I don't like talking to people when I'm at home. Yeah. This is the time I'm going to talk to people. It's like, drive, a, it's like an office. Exactly. Like once you get, get in there, I get it. In. I get it. Yeah. I have like an hour in the car at night, an hour in the morning. The morning I listen to music, podcasts, all that. At night I'll call people. And if I don't, 
I'm putting music on. You call people every car ride on the way home. Not today. You know what I think yeah, is going to happen? Me, and then you were on the phone today. What a bold <laughs> lie. That's a bold lie. Not for the whole ride. You called me? Hey, not for the whole ride. I I'll correct you. myself. Not yeah. for the whole ride. <laughs> Continue. What I think is going to happen is um, I think there's a slow decrease. Like you're saying, um, a lot of these gyms, malls, restaurants, they're not putting radio stations on anymore. It's, it's playlists, Playlist. right? So I think... Like, I hate to say it because I got a lot of friends in radio and radio is important to a point. But I think what's going to happen is just there's going to be like local radio things that you can get on Spotify, uh, on Spotify or Apple or something. I think that's that's where the industry is going. Well, see, so many radio stations already have their own podcast, too. Yeah. They just take just, all the words of what they're why saying. Why not? That's what I do. When I sit in a vehicle, I throw on a podcast that I like. Um like all the way up here, like since I started talking with you guys, I've been I've watching your guys' podcast and and but a big one that I like is Chris D'Elia or Joe Rogan or just like, like the megas. yeah, but like, like you glad like, we're in that conversation though. <laughs> glad we're in that same sentence. Yeah. I appreciate you, but um, but like it's either podcast or you know you throw on I'm an Apple like Apple or Spotify, you know, so like um. I don't know. I just feel like that's the way the industry is. You know what's crazy? You know how like Spotify, I don't like, I don't use Apple very much, but like has like the day lists and like the. Oh, daily. Yeah. Like you're like, it's like a personalized playlist from what you listen to maybe at that time, or they have like their weekly playlist that they make and whatever. If like they could figure out an algorithm for Canadians in those playlists to add more Canadian artists. Well, there are like Canadian yeah, they top, are, no, no, there are Apple, Canadian. There's Canadian like the Canadian top forty playlist because whenever I, I do any like events or anything, I'll put on a generic Canadian top forty playlist. No, yeah, so it's not just Canadian musicians, but it's the top songs in Canada. Like, no, no, but even just like your personalized playlist that they do, if they could find a way to like algorithm, because the it's probably the same type of music. It's listening to new music all the time, and that, that's what's that good in. about the DSPs like Apple, Spotify is like. I'm lucky lucky enough they add me to some of their bigger playlists and like like you're saying I think um they you know as as you listen to some of that music they'll just the algorithm will throw randomly throw me into a to a you know playlist mm -hmm. of whatever so it it brings you to a lot more listeners and that's how I get random people being like, I just I just stumble across it. I'm a big fan. It's awesome. But I, so like I'm grateful for um, the tools that we have, like Apple and Spotify. It's it's great. This is more about the live performing. I'm gonna switch gears a bit. What's the favorite show? Your favorite show you've ever played? One of them being, um, I think it was Kitchener a while back, a few years ago. Uh, a big shout out Kitchener. All right. It was <laughs> it was CMT Fest, and it was um, I was opening. I was on main stage. And it was like, me... Is this the year that you were nominated? No, this is a year before that, I think. Uh, it was I was me, I think Brothers Osborne, Drake White, Zach Brown, Eric Church. Like, it was a big, big lineup. I mean, like, um, I just remember the stage being so dang big. <laughs> and like, and it was, it was, I don't know. That was one of my favorites, but there's been so many for different reasons. I mean... I was telling you guys that um, I just opened for Cooper Allen in Sudbury, and man, the whole crowd was singing along to all my songs. And um, I walk off stage, and all my merch is sold, and there's like over an hour lineup waiting, for, you know, take pictures with me. And, like little things like that, just you know, like fills the heart and 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 just reminds you that you're doing something that the people like. So, well, let me ask you this: Would you rather? This is a I love Would You Rather. Would you? I, we never I, really do Would You Rather. I'm a I big like Would You Rather. That, we're gonna start queuing these up. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think all mine are like. Would you radio. rather? <laughs> would you rather play open for a, a big a big star on like a really big stage? Let's say Red Rocks. Mm -hmm. You opening for uh, someone, Eric Church, at Red Rocks, and you're. It's like kind of half full. Nobody knows your songs, but you're playing that at that. I, this iconic venue mm -hmm. or would you rather be playing a smaller show in you know Nipissing Ontario with a 500 people but every single person knows your songs word for word and they're all singing them back to you that's that's hard because of course 
<laughs> I, I, that's a hard one because because I'll tell you why. I like to break down these would you rather's. <laughs> Picture like a bunch of the boys sitting beside like a campfire in the woods. Like, all right, would you rather? Okay, let me break oh, it down. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm the. He's not as oh, he, but he, I've heard way too many of these. Oh yeah, some of my some of my would you rather's are a little intense, but um, with with yours, it, it, so I'm gonna break it down for you. The one in Nisipping or in Ontario here that you said 500, and they know all my songs is great. There's nothing like that feels that good when. You can hear them singing louder than you. But Red Rocks, the thing I like about some shows is like you have to work extra hard to, if they don't know your songs, I like pushing myself being like, by the end of this set, I'm going to have these guys singing with me. I'm going to have a smile on their face. I like mid song, I get the band to keep going and I, and I start talking to the crowd and I'm like, this is what we're going to, you know, I like getting them involved. So it'd be like more of a, Challenge. A challenge and a thrill to to you know to do that. Okay, so I'm going to switch this up, but very wait. Similar. Hold on, hold on. Wait. So what's the answer though? So I'd choose the Red Rocks because okay. if they already knew me and they my real fans would be like, go get more fans, go go, go rock, do, the, go, yeah, go, or go rock that band. crowd and then okay, come so back. This is similar <laughs> to Ricky's. You're fuck the shit out of yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> this is similar to Ricky's, but what if you played at the Grand Ole Opry, no one knows your music, or you played at Bud Stage and everyone knows your music? Bud stage. I, I'm a, I'm a, hey, I'm just but, but that's a good, Lobby that's that, a good, that's, like, that's an iconic venue. That's a good, would you rather? Yeah. yeah but at your home venue? Like yeah, a, a home venue, but still you're playing but, Grand Ole Opry. Who but Grand Ole Opry is like, for, for country music, it's like the, the that's top. That's like the spot. The top. Okay, you want to know something embarrassing? I don't know where that is. Nashville. Really? It's in Nashville. It's like, you've been in Nashville so many times, you don't know what I mean, Grand that's Opry where is. Grand Ole Opry is like the, I mean, from, from the start of country music <laughs> you know that's like, like the big like that's where like all like the big like shows are like big artists you have to be invited in to, it's like a family like i mean like and you're when that's you're like there one of those, eh? it's i mean the, the members are like guard like all your legends are like part of it so like next time you're in nashville actually let's make a trip to nashville and we'll go watch a show the three of us will go watch- together because yeah. i've never been to the grand you've never been, i've never been either or so a titans game every time you go to nashville i've never <laughs> been to the titans game never been to this venue I know. my man's just like on those like little uh, beer bicycle things <laughs> just pedaling over just I, like, i've never been on one of those either so <laughs> but I, I do i do scoot you know the scooters around there, dude. I fuck the lamest thing you could do uh, in Nashville. My man's <laughs> doing it. No, but I'm just like I. Um, I'm always. Your girls are gonna listen to this. And be like, fuck that. <laughs> I'm always in studio, or I'm I'm writing. Like I go down there for a reason now, yeah. because yeah. like if I gotta go, if I gotta go, I'm just like. I go for the minimum time I possibly can because I miss the heck out of my girls. So I like I go for like four days, and it's like literally like two song rights a day, and like in studio at night. And then I wake up and I get eat breakfast, then go to the first song right, and song rights because sometimes are three, maybe four hours, right? And so like, my days are like I'm exhausted by the time I come back. Yeah, so, I get it. but if you guys are going, you just tell no, me a date. I've heard that like it doesn't matter who's playing, like it's an experience. Oh, definitely, but but always someone's playing. Yeah. Oh, always it's there'll be big names that you, you know. Well, they even big names show up. They say the, yeah. all the time. I've uh, I've been to Nashville five or six times. I've never even heard. Of it, yeah, but do you stay on Broadway? I stay like fairly close. You stay with all, all the bachelorette parties. So I'll be yeah, basically. <laughs> I'll be either like near Broadway or like near Vanderbilt, like kind of in that yeah, in neighborhood. Yeah. And like I do the same thing every time I go to Nashville. I do Broadway one night. I'll do a Preds game usually, or like some more sort of like activity. Then I'll do a football game for sure. Broadway again, and then like just walking. I was supposed to be uh, I was supposed to be there next week. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Whiskey Jam, but um, they finally they reached out to me and um, Rob please. Yeah, okay, Whiskey Jam's made Luke Combs. I mean, you name all these uh, big guys. Like they started at um, Morgan Wallen. Like all these guys, they they started at Whiskey Jam, right? So um, they reached out and they wanted me to come. Um, at the start of August, they gave me like three or four days. I'm like, I'm in BC, open for <laughs> Keith know. Urban. Then I'm and then Boots and Hearts with Jason LD. I'm like, Bye. anyway, they're like, oh, don't worry, we'll do September or October or something. And I was like, perfect. Like, it's something I want to do, but like, 
Um, was, that's when I'll, I'll let you guys know the date, and we'll go to a Titans well, game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've never been to Titans oh, game. Well, so never been to the Opry, so we'll just yeah, make a trip last out. Time, so I've been to Nashville twice in the last year. I went uh, recently for a buddy of mine was DJing at a nightclub there, so I went to go see it. It was during the CMAs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was during the CMAs. Yeah. So the cities. Oh, it's unbelievable. I've never, like I've been to Nashville many times. I've never seen a, a street. I've never witnessed anything like that. Yeah. Like where the entire street, as far as the eye can see, is just people. And like when I mean beautiful people, like holy fuck, everybody was beautiful. Just dolled up. Like, just like, oh yeah. my God. And then the time before that I went, I uh, I went to the I went to a Titans game. I went with my mom. And so I do social media stuff. So me and the Titans, like we follow each other. We're cool. I DM them. I'm like, hey, I'm going to the game. Like, can I get tickets or something? Like, yeah, we'll take care of you, blah, blah, blah. They gave me tickets. I get to go on the field. I get to go on like... So I'm going with you then. Oh, yeah. Guess who was in his suite that's and he what, had no was, clue. That's what I was just about mm. to get to. So I'm in the suite and you, like everybody's in somebody. I, I'm like a fucking nobody. And like you just, you know when you're in the room with somebody's. Yeah. So at one point I'm looking around and I text her. I was like, hey, who the fuck are these people? I snap a picture. And she goes, holy fuck, that's like Chelsea Ballerini. No, Kelsey and Ballerini. Whatever. Yeah. Kelsey Ballerini and whatever Chase they, Stokes whatever their names are right and like Chelsea Ballard Outer Banks just, dude yeah, yeah. yeah the Banks <laughs> dude and she just won like singer female up and coming singer of the year or something didn't she oh, she's massive she won some award yeah. like a week oh, before yeah. and I'm like I got no idea who this guy. and like they're just there shooting the shit we're all taking shots drinking having a good that's time that's awesome and I'm like holy fuck Nashville fuck yeah yeah, yeah man it's, it's totally it's turned into the Vegas really it's yeah it's Nashville instead of, ga- instead of gambling it's music but I mean like literally they, they beat Vegas the last six years for bachelorette parties and bachelor parties. I mean, like, I rarely go down down to Broadway because it's just craziness. But like, there's the odd time I'm like, let's go uh, shoot some top golf, then we'll go downtown Broadway or something. But it's de- definitely if no if you've never been to that Nashville, you definitely got to experience. Like right now, it's like a highlight. It's the new new LA or it's the new New York it's it's the happening place in the states for well, sure well you know what we did one day we jumped on one of the buses to like tour us around so we could see everything because like I, well, I was there for a long time you gotta and scoot was... that shit <laughs> you got I'm telling I... no you got a beer bicycle that shit <laughs> yeah I was a family I have a younger sister and Tennessee is a all ID state yeah everywhere yeah. you go so like yeah. it's very strict my sister's 17 so no the scooters like I mean like me and my buddies I'm just like we just I don't know they always they always bust my balls about it, but I, I, I just I have fun doing it. You know what I mean? I'm just like, like, oh, we got like three hour break. What do you guys want to do? I'm like, I'm going to scoot. <laughs> but like, you break into like, you know, those parking garages that go all the yeah. way up, like, and then you whip down and you're like slide. Like, you got to make fun. Like, it's it's fun. I, I want to ask you. So like you extreme scooting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned probably I don't know a couple dozen different names here, but who would be your dream artist to collab with? Ah man! You've mentioned so many different oh, names dude. in the last. I could probably. Th- I don't. I don't know what style of music you're into. No, this or, is for you though. I know, but like I'm gonna name some names because I'm gonna not just name one person. I'm gonna put together a band that I'd like to do a Fuck, song with. Yeah. So on lead guitar, I'd probably put Zach Wild. He plays with Ozzy Osbourne. I kind of grew up loving him. I put Tommy Lee from Motley Crue on drums. I've been a big Crue fan. I think I've seen them nine times. Um, you know Keith Urban, just crazy at guitar. He's super talented, positive dude. I like put him on rhythm guitar, backup vocals, um, and then we'll throw uh, throw a little uh, Sammy Hagar from Van Halen in there. He's just a party guy. I don't know. I think we would come up with something pretty good. You know, even invite Brian Adams, maybe. You know, add some Canadian. You know? Look, we've had, we've this is episode give or take two eighty five. We've had at least what seventy five musicians. Yeah. And we've asked every single one of them this question. Not a single one's formed a band. You're right there, man. Not a single person <laughs> has ever formed. We're a taking band we're t- we're taking auditions too. We're looking <laughs> we're looking for a bass player. So. <laughs> I fucking love that. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is like that. You know, when something bad happens in the world, we need like a charity like group song. Yeah. This is it. Okay, but yeah. notice how he also stared right at the camera. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. everyone's instinct to stare or point when they're doing a shout out or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> I love that though. Yeah. Okay, so I, I did one of those songs actually. Um, I did one of those, you know, those the "We Are the World" songs. Yeah, yeah. So COVID hit, COVID hit, and I was just like, man, like I'm not not doing anything. So I'm like, I just wrote a song called "Together We're Strong," and I just called 
a bunch of buddies like Corey Marks, Jason Blaine, Aaron Pachette, Jason McCoy, the Road Hammers. I mean, like there was, I think, 17 of us on the song. But then I sh got everybody to send me videos for everybody from Robin Arlini to, I mean, um, Tom Cochran to like i mean there's so many there's over 100 people in the video and then um snowbirds heard it and they shot video they got involved like it was it was a pretty cool thing to do back in i think it was 2020, 2020. yeah so um that's pretty cool because like you can do all this on yourself too like you probably edited it yeah i edited every, i had all the, the time world, yeah. yeah man i i think i gained like 30 pounds because <laughs> what do you do will you wake up and i was cracking a beer and ordering a pizza by 11 a.m and you do the banana <laughs> bread thing nonsense. yeah <laughs> fucking everybody and their mothers was eating banana bread <laughs> yeah. during COVID. so are you i, I that's i'm not I'm <laughs> I, I, I was it i was too i still do it i still do yeah. it. that's why I, i'm kind of thick but no that's fucking awesome yeah i just i just i like to stay busy so it's like, <clears throat> I'm like, I'm just, I try to release this new song every, every few months. And like, I'm finally putting out my first album. I think it's going to be in September. I put it out, but there's 30 songs going to be on it. And I'm, I'm doing that. I'm excited to get it out, but I'm also excited to kind of end the cha the chapter. And I have already like 30 new songs for the next album already kind of recorded, but it's like, a little bit of different style it's like a, a little bit more raw and uh, like um old school rather than the you know produced pop country it's kind of like like a raw country rock or or like you know more acoustic bass very very raw stuff but uh you know it's just i like to stay busy but i also like to entertain myself by by keeping it different and keeping it keeping myself on my toes and keeping it fresh all the time I love that you like are about to release like your first album, but then you also have like the next one already pressed. Oh, I, I, I like. Do you have a big like? You know how like a lot of artists we've talked to have like a vault. Do you have oh. a lot in your vault, or do you just like release them? Oh no, I. I it's, you could ask. Oh. I, I love when people in the background are like, he fucking knows already. Oh yeah, like um, I mean, if you had access to my phone, like uh, there's I, I what think. If the, what if you break the phone, lose the phone? Gotta put them on. Oh, hard good copies. call, good call. Because <laughs> they're not, they're not <laughs> hard, hard copy, yeah. There's, a, there's probably about 67 um, unreleased songs on my phone that, that I've recorded that uh, I could put out at any any time. It's just like, and like if anything happened to me, I showed my wife how you upload them to the end. <laughs> <laughs> The postmortem. <laughs> yeah. Postmortem. I'm like, hopefully, uh, hopefully sales go up with, and then like you could just release them and you know, but, um, but uh, I thought that was a conversation. <laughs> Fuck. But my, it, you She's know, probably like shut up, like don't talk like that. It's all about finding that one person that you could be yourself about. And my wife, I can say, because I'm just a, a, a weird, like just I say what's on my mind. I don't have no filters. I just, and uh, it's about finding that person that accepts that. And like, I mean, I can have any conversation with my wife because she's just she's like my best friend. So. um but yeah, I got tons of new music and I'm constantly recording more and I'm constantly just finding cool things to do. Like I just started this new thing two months ago um, about me grabbing a song that I normally wouldn't do or you wouldn't think that I would do. And I re-recorded it with a video and then I released it on my YouTube page. So two months ago I did like a Creed song. My own version. Just in town. My own, yeah, my own version of it. But like, it's like a country, like raw version with my voice and stuff. Then, since it was Canada Day, I did the anthem, and then tomorrow's the first, right? Um, I'm releasing a Dell song. Wow. So like, um, I just try to be. Uh, I just try to find these little fun things that are just different. So like, um, I'm just every month I have one recorded for like just songs I grew up on. Maybe nobody knows what it is, but like. Or maybe it's not even the right genre. Like, you know, like sometimes I, at shows I do that. I throw in a Lannis Morissette song or I throw in like, you know, um, a Metallica song, done, done, done Country, you know, where people are like, oh, this what sounds familiar, yeah. but I don't know what it Can't is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is completely, what's your, what's a day look like? What's a normal day look like? Yeah, I was literally thinking this. I'm like, Actually, when you're not touring, like, yeah, what does your day to day, well, day like? look like? Well, you'll, you'll be like, you'll shake in your head because, like, most people don't know this. So, like, for the last 10 years, I have, a, I run a business. I have my own business. I do uh, custom marble showers, like, high end, like, 
what the fuck and i I, where the fuck did that come from i do i because as a musician growing up i needed to be because it was my number one love i always knew that always have something to fall back on so i had my welding certificate i was a welder for four years i did bricklaying so i did masonry for five years i was electrician for three years um got into plumbing when did the hand thing happen um, I was welding at the time okay. and I was running a shop and um, somebody had tr trouble with the machine and uh, it just grabbed the corner of my glove, sucked my hand in. And thank God, I look at, back at it now, it, like doctor said my hand should have been ripped off right away with the size of the, the bit. But I reached up, shut it off, um, pulled my hand out. All I could see is my bones and I grabbed my skin, flapped it back over and I'm like... I'm I'm okay, and like the, the kid, my buddy that was working with me, he's like, "No, dude, you're white." I'm like, "I'm good. I'm just gonna drive home." He's like, "Home's like an hour and a half away." He's like, "I'm taking you to the hospital." I'm like, "Okay, let's go." <laughs> so <laughs> they put some stitches in, and I, like that's what changed my life. I mean, I went from this to like, you know, to kind of change where I just started playing music and and doing what. So take us take us. Okay, so we did the millwork, the welding, the electrical, the plumbing. Where did we get the marble showers? Dude, I, like, it's Where just just from? family. Like, my, um, so, um, my, she was not my wife at the time, but we've been together for a few years, and her cousin had his own business, and he was, uh, he was doing stuff like that, so, um, um, he asked if I wanted to help. I started helping out, and then I just started my own business, um, doing because i'm so good at it like it's custom marble if i showed you some of the pictures you'd be like like we rip out dumps and we come in and we turn it into like it looks like a spa it's all marble it's all it's it just looks so nice so when the fuck did you have the time to write the 67 song so so that's the, this is a full <laughs> this is my normal day so i i wake up probably around seven o'clock either my girls come jump on me or I, I sneak in to see my girls i'd like to spend I don't leave my house till around 8.30 because I like to spend at least an hour and a half with the girls in the morning, have breakfast, get in the, uh, the work truck, and um, I go meet um, my drummer works with me, um, and then um, we go and we, uh, we do the job until whenever it's done. And usually we try to, you know, get out of there pretty early. So, so we get, uh, get home, and then I spend some more time with the kids, and then... Um, they know it as daddy do la 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 so if daddy has to go do some music or write i have my studio in the basement and i go down and and you know some nights i do the song rights with other artists or or i uh have to go to the studio or yeah and then when that's done i go up lay in bed beside my wife so i'm at least beside her and i do the graphic design i have to do <laughs> so it doesn't it doesn't stop it really doesn't but you can rest when you're dead, right? So. I, I fucking agree with that. What's yeah. your wife say about all this? Like, she's so supportive, man. She's my number like, one. Like she's she's my number one fan. She's my she's, you know, I, I don't know, man. I am so lucky to have her. I, I um. I see the twinkle in your eyes. You talk, dude. About it's it's it's, it's, it's I one thing I hope for everybody is that they get a chance to find, um, the person they belong with. You know, I won't say soulmate. I won't say anything. Everybody has their own. But like, there's, I feel like there's someone that you belong with that pulls out the best version of you, and that's what, what I found. And I hope I do the same for her. I, you know, I was walking around the street the other day. Um, bought my girls one of the those Mercedes Benz uh, um, uh, Jeeps. <laughs> Yeah. Where so I ripped out the back. Two too. I ripped yeah, leather seats, rubber tires. I'm at, I get them to wash it. I say if you want nice things, you take care of nice things. I get them to wash it and stuff. And it has the radio and and Bluetooth and stuff. And they they love their truck. They love their truck. But um, um, we we take it for these walks. And I ripped out the battery because like you got to charge those things for eight hours, and like they last like two hours maybe. Maybe so. What I did is I ripped it up and I rewired it to a, a Milwaukee batteries. So like in the back, you can fit like like ten of them, and like each of those batteries, and make it go faster. One now it whips. Now I have to like to turn it down. Yeah, a bit, right? now, now I'm controlling. But I was walking with my like get back to the story. I was walking with my wife. 
it's like three days ago and i was controlling it and they're driving and um i forget what song came on but they're both dancing and just having a blast and the sun is out and we're walking our 135 pound rottweiler and life was good man it's like it's like the, those times when i when i said you got to appreciate the moments we just looked at each other like i know there's some things that you always want you want sometimes it's you want the bigger house or or you want you want this or you want that but sometimes you like i am so blessed and so thankful for what i like is in that moment it's little moments like that you know where we looked at each other and um yeah the love i have for her and the kids and and just my life right now it's like unbelievable so, that's beautiful yeah i i know what you mean even we i think we talked about it on the podcast a couple of weeks ago where sometimes you're so focused on your goals and chasing your goals that you forget to stop and enjoy the process 100 percent. you know like you're you're always go 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 we got to get to that finish line but then you forget to enjoy the journey and the people you're with on these journeys because yeah. Sometimes the journey is more important than the destination, right? I know there's like a proper quote for that, but it's it's true. That's I, I remind myself that all the time. It's like these little, <clears throat> like if everything fell on your lap, would you would you you know appreciate it as much? It? I don't think so. It's like these these no's and stuff and stuff that you get as an up and comer that you like pushes you to like, you know, take it in and learn from those no's and learn what what you're missing and you know. Um, it's just like when I play live, there's one guy I can always trust my, my old man, my dad will right from when I started music, I said, I don't want, you know, enough people blow smoke up my ass. I said, when I'm done, I just want you to tell me not how good, tell me what I could, what I need correcting, you know, what was wrong with it. So like, like, it's like people like that, that the honesty and, you know, that. no, I, I fucking get it completely. So it's uh, it's very well said. We we are nearing that part, but I want to ask you. Obviously, you got a lot happening in the next two weeks. What's the rest of the year look like for you? Um, like I said, it's festival season, man. I'm just I'm just thankful. I got um, I got Sunfest this weekend, Boots the following weekend. I um, I'm in Stony Creek for a festival, Boots in the Creek the following weekend, and Barry another festival in Barry. Um, we got a big one out <clears throat> in Sable Beach. On my birthday, I my birthday is August thirty first. Playing with Owen Ringley. Uh, there's um, another Canadian. Yeah, he's blowing up. He he's written a few of my songs with me. He's so talented. I'm so happy for him. Um, who else is gonna be there? Down down with Webster. Um, yeah, they Tabor. they're doing a little like a yeah here. yeah. So it's Sabo Beach is gonna be pumping on my birthday weekend. It's gonna be great. But uh, we're all over the place. And like I said, I'm just gearing up to release this first album. Get thirty songs out there. Um, and then go back to Nashville. Bring you like bring you guys and go see a Titans game. Finally, Fuck yeah, <laughs> we're gonna go all go to the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah, that's, right. that's, I love right. this. that's I love right. this. I'm so fucking down. For that. Get this guy some cowboy boots. Go to the Grand Ole Opry. Like, you don't think I got cowboy? Boots? <laughs> you don't think I got a cowboy hat? Yeah. Every time I go, I, buy I was I was gonna wear my Jays. I, I was. Man, gonna... I have so my cowboy boots. I tr I don't whip them out too much because like they're kind of snug on me now. But I bought myself uh, like a proper nice cowboy hat. Maybe two or three times ago, I was there. Yeah, and I went to the store. I spent like two hundred bucks. Mind you, I probably got ripped off because it was like just off Broadway. I didn't yeah. go on Broadway because I knew I was gonna get really ripped off on Broadway. Yeah. So I went a couple streets like adjacent, uh, but I got myself like a nice one. I said the next time I go, I'm gonna go to one of those stores and get like a custom fitted, custom design. Dude, do, do it here. Do it here, dude. I my hat, uh, coupe de tête. They're they're here in Toronto, on Queen, I believe. Um, but I have a custom, they custom it to my head, the color I want. They even have the blue jay feather coming out of it with the burnt bandana. And underneath, it has burnt in my wife's name, both my twin's name, and my dog's name underneath with a palm tree burnt on the top because I'm a palm, I'm a I'm an island boy. I, I, got a, I got a palm tree somewhere here. Right here, man. Yeah, I got one too. I'm already looking at how, me and my wife are just like, should we just look at houses in Costa Rica? And like, let's. You know. Did we not just have someone say the same thing? <clears throat> what Costa Rica? Everyone we just got married. We That's where we got married. Uh, oh. It's Costa Rica. And um, I mean, you can live down there, like a house even north of the city for detached homes, you know, it's a couple hundred, no, not maybe like five, six, seven hundred thousand. Down there, it's like nothing. No, one hundred and twenty thousand grabs you a great Beautiful. house in Americanized community, and uh, I mean, cost of living is cheaper down there. Way cheaper. I like fresh so fruit everywhere actually, you go. Actually, before we wrap up, would you ever consider moving to Nashville? 
because even all my of, all my friends have because cost of living is also much lower in nashville yeah than this year. all my friends and my producers i, I like traveling to nashville uh-huh. um there's already i mean what's the population of nashville i don't know whatever the population is there's that many more people way more talented than me down there so there's no sense on me going down there i'm i'm happy here living my life and then visiting that's why i'm looking at you know i love love canada for summer and and, and touring and stuff but i'm not a, a winter guy I, i'm not a winter we, guy we literally been talking about this every episode we are not winter people. so like this past winter i'm like one of the happiest go lucky people you'll ever meet man. Yeah. i'm like always cheery like happy big smiles high energy this winter i was like borderline depressed i was gone like when most we had of the, like 30 <laughs> days of like darkness here i think yeah. it was in january i was like what the fuck yeah i was in barbados <laughs> I, I was there six days where I didn't see the sun. I actually, I like, was like miserable from January until April. I'm an accountant, and April's obviously shit for me. And like March was shit. The was just finishing up winter. The weather was all bad too. Literally finished April 30th. May 1st was like our first 25 degree heat randomly in May. Yeah, my mood instantly switched. And I'm it's like, Let's so like, true. It made such a difference. It's so true, and that's why I, it's very important to me. And that's one thing I made clear to my wife is just like. We do whatever we have to do, but I need to go, like, I need to break the winter up, like, three times. So her family, she has family in Barbados. She has parents and stuff live out in um, Florida. Um, Fucking right. So She's like, got it figured out. So, like, <laughs> we do that, but, like, there's sometimes, like, right now we're, um, I think for November, we're going to plan something for just a bunch of my musician friends and just anybody who wants to come, go to Dominican. Like, just from November to i mean march it's all about like fitting in three vacations just to break up the yeah like you said the lack of vitamin d and just the just the it's kind of how we're saying like it's like i feel like right now this summer i've been putting a real big emphasis and i'm appreciating every single day and not missing a moment but in the winter it's like you almost need that push what can i look forward to to get out of the like this weather yeah so it's like breaking up this like with the trips I like li- I live in a sauna, like I'm a sauna like every day type guy, and like I just hate the cold. Like I'm doing the cold plunging now. Are you? Uh, yeah, for the last because like I always have to say this before I say it. I, I didn't have an issue drinking or nothing, but I'm like 300 and I'm almost at a year. So September, the start of September last year, I just said I was at the CCMA Awards. And I was just hung over and I was just like, dude, what am I doing? I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to do a, a year off. I took a, I, I just went cold turkey, not only on booze and, and everything else. I stopped pop as well because I love my Dr. Pepper and, and Pepsi and stuff like that. So I just stopped everything and I started cold plunging like ice baths. And I've always loved sauna, but I just try to do it every day. And I tell you that it's a night and day, my body, my sleep, my, you know like it's crazy you should definitely get into it. if you haven't tried like the ice baths and stuff it's torture but it's he has at his house so, my, so we do that home, like yeah. I, I plunge probably three four days a week now yeah i just um <clears throat> maybe for the last few months i've I put a like big emphasis on my physical health and i've been doing the same thing yeah so like i dropped 10 pounds i've been cold plunging three times a week i so my big thing in the summer is i walk yeah. So I I basically go on at least like minimum hour long walks every, almost every single day, and it's just the little things about being outside, fresh air, the sun. Even when the sun's not, I just feel fucking good. I think there's a big movement on that right now, and I'm I'm like so pumped for it. It's like, it's almost cool to like not like I go to now to Nashville now, and I'm like oh I stopped drinking, I stopped drinking, I stopped drinking. Oh we're going for walks, like we we do this, we cold plunge. I'm like, oh, that's like I didn't know this was going, but I do See, too. I don't know <laughs> you if know? it's a movement. I think we're just getting old, but I think yeah, yeah, I think probably. We're just fucking probably. Getting old. Everyone's like, yeah, that hangover. Yeah, that hangover. I used to rally. You no, can rally now. Uh-uh. Yeah, no. Even like just not even that, but like I think COVID really got people to slow down for a second, and I think there was a big drinking push during COVID, but then mm-hmm. also people realized they wanted to be outside more, and the walks and all that kind of stuff. That lifestyle started like slowly kicking in. Now we're a few years later older and then the rest follows through it just hit started hitting me harder and so like the hangover lasts like four days now and i was just like pussy yeah (laughs) i'm just like well i was just like man i like to challenge myself Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i quit smoking four years ago but like it was one of my favorite things to do but i was like does it control me or do i control it i smoked for like 20 years so i'm like 
you know, a cold, cur- cold turkey. And then I bought a Mustang, um, cheaper, a new Mustang, cheaper than it was for smoke. Like smoking's oh, yeah. more more expensive like than. Coffee. <laughs> you guys, you guys go to Starbucks. Holy, like, I'm just, I fuck with Starbucks big time. I, yeah. I drink Starbucks. Yeah. But like, you know, five bucks a day every day for the next 10 years. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay, stop looking at me. Like, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. I, had I, I quit minutes. coffee. I quit coffee years ago for a whole other reason. It, it involves the highway, a traffic jam, and me on the side of the road using the side of the road as a washroom, waving to people passing me. And then I just didn't touch coffee since then. So that's my coffee story. But <laughs> I feel like you got some stories for days. Oh here. man, I, I got some stories. Yeah, we'll, we'll need a whole other podcast for that. But no, but uh, this has been this has been great, man. Yeah. Fuck, you had you had some great stories. We definitely got to get you back in. Maybe, oh, anytime. Maybe we'll do it in the winter when things slow down. Post when Nashville. Yeah, maybe post Nashville. Or bring or it Nashville. to Nashville. Or in Nashville. <laughs> Let's do it on location. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so we've done it a couple of times. It's chaotic, but yeah, we've yeah. done it. It's fun. But man, I appreciate you coming on. Um, if people want to find out more about you, your music, upcoming shows, where can they go? How can they find you? You can go to bjharwood.com or you know, type in Brian John Harwood, Instagram, Facebook, um, Apple Music. Check out my videos on YouTube. Ch- just type in Brian John Harwood and, and you'll find me. Appreciate it. Beauty. Cool. Um, that you good? That's it. All right, man. If you made it to the end of this, guys, we appreciate you. Give him a follow. Give us a follow. Stay tuned for his upcoming shows, new releases, and we will see you guys next week. Oh, Bye. yeah. Cheers. You like to drink and to smoke to take away the pain. And I don't remember all of my mistakes in every eye. I got alone. No one thing. You're not all right. I'm not all right. Take away the